New Guinea and welcome to Sports Scene. Now tonight may look a little bit different yeah, for you. Yeah, it is different because you've grown. I don't yes, know how that I happened, have. but <laughs> and, we're in um, We ventured out of the MTV studios here in Port Moresby. We're here at the Vicini Parade. Behind us, as you can see, the cricket fields over to our left, uh, formerly known as Baba Rugby Park over there, AFL, soccer back there, Jeremy's favorite place in the whole He's probably out there world. right now, but... Yeah, probably. Yeah, That's why he's not here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, on tonight's program, we talk a little bit about boxing. Um, we hear some, you know, uh, we hear from Shane about surfing, something yep. we haven't had in a long time. So an update there, um, and of course an update on rugby sevens and a football. lot of football. But Jeremy will not. And I'm stop only going to say soccer because I know it really frustrates Jeremy. It does. It does. It <laughs> but yes, let's does. um, let's talk boxing. Uh -huh. Now over the weekend there was a tournament held to raise funds for the Kairuku Boxing Association. Yes, that's right. And uh, those funds will go towards um, assisting the boxers, which will be travelling to uh, new the New Island Province mm -hmm. for the national boxing championships, championships later on this month. And we do know that Kairuku boasts a lot of national representatives in boxing, and um, I reckon this is going to be really interesting. I mean, it's, it was really interesting following the Pacific Games and then going into the championships while some of them are eyeing for a spot, hopefully in Rio. Yes, now KABA Boxing President Andrew MacGyver also speaks a little bit about um, why m some of the renowned boxers were excluded from this competition that was held over the weekend. Now let's hear from Elijah on the weekend's happening. The fight featured boxers from the Kairuku Boxing Association and the NCD Boxing Association, with boxers going head to head. Some of PNG's best boxers were present as well, in the likes of Pacific Games captain Tom Boga and silver medalist Rafaela Kaure, who represented NCD Boxing, while gold medalist in the 52 kg division Louis Magaiva boxed for Kaba. Boxers from Kaba put up a good fight against PNG's best. Kaba president Andrew MacGyver thanked the boxers and everyone that took part. For us, uh, Kairuku team to be sent to uh, uh, KBN Foreign National Championship, uh, which is dated on the 26th of uh, November to 29th. Over of November this uh, year. Uh, we made up uh, two teams, Kairuku uh, uh, Team 1 and uh, Kairuku Team 2 against the NCD Team 1 and NCD Team 2. Uh, team 1 is, um, is a consist of boxers who are going to participate for this uh, national championship, uh, uh, which is just around the corner. And uh, Team 2 is the one that uh, we want to uh, showcase for uh, with, the, with the National uh, Capital District uh, for our uh, uh, goal uh, prospects uh, for next year, uh, 2016 uh, PNG Games. Yes, of course, I want to say this uh, to uh, all the other uh, uh, sponsors. I'm calling on to all the other sponsors. Uh, uh, to come around and uh, support uh, boxing by uh, uh, contributing uh, from their resources to boxing, uh, basically to promote and uh, um, develop boxing in our district of Kairuku and the nation as a whole. Next week Sunday, we'll see the NCD boxers go at each other 
in preparation for the national championships in Kavian. You're watching MTV Sports Scene. Jeremy Mogi brings us all the football updates after the break. Do not go anywhere. Now, as mentioned before the break, uh, Jeremy Moggy will be joining us in this segment for an update on everything soccer. Dion, you know a bit about what he will be telling us about tonight. Yes, um, he's going to highlight a few important issues around football, also coming up with the NSL, um, just a whole lot of football stuff. So Jeremy Moggy was over at the Sir John Guy Stadium and brings us all these football updates. Thanks, guys. I'm over here at the Sejongai Stadium for day two of the Eastern Papua Carnival, which is a uh, provincial tournament run by the Million Bay community based here in Port Moresby, and it's been on since 1978. And uh, there have been a handful of clubs um, that still exist from that time. Now, initially, the competition had started with only 16 clubs. Since then, over the years, it has grown to number, at one stage, up to 46. For this year's competition, however, there are 32 men's teams and 14 for the ladies, uh, 46 in total. Now, some of the big names uh, of PNG football, you know, people like uh, Andrew Lepani, Kemma Jacks, one of them, Nathaniel Lepani as well, they all took part in this competition. In fact, one of the newest members of the PNG squad, Basil Jofari, also played in the Eastern Papua Carnival. Now, after day one of competition, it was Mayela, the defending champions, who had had a 4-0 victory alongside them, Gabutu FC. And uh, both teams, I think, will be looking at making a, or staking a claim for a place uh, in the finals uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you so much, uh, Jeremy. Thank you, MTV. Yes, we have uh, been off for a while, uh, especially in the 2014, due to the unavailability of uh, ovals uh, when the grounds were been upgraded for the SP games, we had to put off our games uh, uh, during that year. But uh, EPC is back in uh, 2015 and we're ready to go. I can see there's a fairly good amount of people here. It has been a while. What has the hype been like? Jeremy, you can see, you know, you can feel it. I can feel it in my bones that uh, there's so much excitement we have generated, uh, I suppose because while we were off, the, the build-up of uh, our players and our people from Mule Bay, for them to get back into EPC soccer has really built up over the, the last two years. And so we're now ready to kick off and you can see with the preparations that have been put in by the clubs and the sponsors that have come in is so immense and I'm, I'm so impressed with the preparations so far. Speaking of preparations, just give us a rundown. There are uh, 32 men, 14 women. Yes, definitely. We have uh, 32 men and uh, uh, 14 uh, women's teams. We have uh, decided uh, as a body of uh, EPC community here in Port Mosby to uh, scale down the number to that many in, in an effort to try and build up uh, a soccer level in EPC. We're doing this basically because we want to see more of our Mule Bay uh, people, especially young uh, stars that are coming up in soccer to get into uh, NSL, to get into PMSA, uh, Public Seven Soccer, and uh, the National League, yeah, basically. Now, the Besta Cup just ended, and uh, it was Kaupa Tree coming from Keapara who beat LFA, which had some of the biggest stars in the country. You think that in a couple of years' time, EPC can be affiliated, even though it's an off-season competition, and still be able to send a representative side to the Best of Cup. We have started, uh, you know, pushing the ID around, and uh, we are definitely looking at that. Yes, yes, definitely. How good do you think the Million Bay players are? We will be even better. Uh, we know all the other other provinces can play soccer, but Million Bay can also play soccer. Bid Tomikita, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Now, big news in the world of PNG football itself. 
Uh, we have lost not just one, but two of our national coaches. That is Ricky Herbert and Gary Phillips for both the senior men's and women's teams. Now, this is a big issue considering the fact that in 2016, there are a number of events that the PNG national teams will be taking part in. One of them is the OFC Nations Cup, and that's going to feature about eight different countries from across the Pacific, all making their way here to Port Moresby. And our men's national team currently right now are under the guidance of uh, assistant coach Reginald Davani, and we wish them all the best. In fact, here's a look at the names in that squad. Leslie Kalai and Ronald Warrison have been rewarded alongside under 23 squad keepers Ishmael Pole and Charles Lepani. In the center of defense, Valentine Nelson, young John Ray, Joshua Talao, Agi Moses, and Jeffet Tiempo from Lay City Dwellers. Three Hakari players have been named as fullbacks Daniel Joe, Koraku Paiga, and Jeremy Asasa, alongside Otto Kusinan and former PNG youth captain Roland Bala. In the midfield, it's a young squad with Jacob Sabua, Darren Steven, Nathan James, Simon Emmanuel alongside Troy Gunemba, PNG captain David Muta, and experienced midfielder Michael Foster. No surprises up front, Raymond Gunemba and Nigel Dabinyaba with Papala Oele, Patrick Aiza, Neil Hans, Emmanuel Iram, Tommy Sammy, and Basil Jafari. The extended list includes Rodney Mobiha, John Bai, Jamal Sito, Marcus Gelmal, and Vanya Melagian. In terms of overseas based players, there is no other name bigger than that of David Brown who played with Auckland FC and of course Wira Wama who plays in the American Collegiate Competition. Also included are the Comalong brothers, Harry Hillary Jenkins who played with FC Port Moresby, Maori Wasi based in New Zealand, Gimale Esekau, Brad McDonald, George Schleffendorfus, Brandon Benny and Jordan Sito in Australia. No, of course, last week was the ending of the Best FA National Championships and uh, Kaupa Team 3 made it in third place. They beat LFA and then it was, of course, Manus having a 1-0 victory over Madang. Now, that's in terms of the associations. One of the things um, that I feel should be pushed for is to have a bit more in terms of club competitions, having a national club championships, of course, on top of the fact that they do have a Best of Tournament. Uh, but that is something I'm pretty sure PNG Football Association have been trying uh, to work around. But perhaps the big thing that is happening, which will start in only a few days' time, is of course season number 11 of the Telecom National Soccer League. Unlike previous years, this time they have a host of brand new teams in there. Six, in fact, out of 12. Now we do know Lay City Dwellers, Hekari, we've got Medang, FC Port Moresby as well. They'll all be taking part. But then. There are also the new ones. Now, we have covered Gigelai Tepo. We've taken a look at, also at um, PS4, where United. And just a couple of days ago, I caught up with FC Rapatona, who are making their debut in the 2015-16 season of the Telecom National Soccer League. Here's uh, Clement Anison, the assistant coach. First question, Rapatona, new side in the competition. How do you feel they will perform uh, this season? Um, actual fact, uh we are new, uh, we're not aiming to win anything this season, but we are going to develop them for the next next season. That's the whole idea. Because I, I noticed you do have a very young squad here. Yes, we do. Uh, they all came from the club. Uh, they are youths, and the club has uh, uh, the tendency of building youths to, to mature players. And as you can see, we have a number of youths in there. And we're not rushing to uh, uh, come out and you know try to win everything. We are here to build the team for the, in the long run for the for the season. Now, true uh, former head coach um, <coughs> Kisaki Postman, the Rapatona that took part in both uh, public service and Port Moresby Soccer Association, did have a very different style from a lot of the other teams. Is that going to be the case here with this one? Um, it is because we have. Uh, uh, a plan, a uh, structural plan that we're building the club. It's not one of thing. Uh, the plan has been there and we're developing players from from the lower level up to, to a standard that is expected of a new standard of soccer. Now currently right now you have a number of very familiar faces. Few of them have been named in the 
uh, train on squad. Tell us about your boys. Well, uh, I think that the team itself now is banking on the experience of those those selected players, the teams that have rep PNG, uh, players that have rep the national side, and uh, we're banking on that for the experience, for the leadership, and uh, yes, everything depends on on those players. Now, finally, last question: uh, You are assisting uh, Max Foster. Yes, I am. Uh, we are working together as. Uh, as a coach, uh, according to the plan from the master. Perhaps the biggest news, of course, is the fact that world football superstar David Beckham, former Manchester United, former Real Madrid, former PSG, former LA Galaxy. Yes, you can tell I am a big fan of David Beckham. And he was here in the country uh, as part of the UNICEF program. And he headed over to Mount Hagen to assist uh, with the drought-affected um, relief that they have over there. And he was also able to have a match with uh, locals in, in the Highlands region. So that's a really great plus for football here in the country. Welcome back to the show. Now, Lorraine, a bit of an update on the uh, National Sevens teams, both men and women. Yes, now the PNG Puk Puk's and Palais team were named last week. They will be traveling to Auckland tomorrow for the 2015 Oceania Sevens Championships. Now, this will be big for both teams, particularly the PNG Puk Puk's, as it'll act as both a qualified to the 2016 Rio Olympics and, of course, the HSBC Wellington Sevens. Now, this will be big for the PNG Puk Puk's, as it will be used as both a qualifying to the 2016 Rio Olympics and of course the HSBC Wellington Sevens which is at the start of next year and the Hong Kong Sevens as well. Um, we saw the boys just fall short um, mm -hmm. in this year's competition so it was really unfortunate for them but uh, hopefully if they can get there um, they're looking to go one step further. Now for the Palais it will be a qualifier for the 2016 Rio Olympics. Now Lorraine the boys with a development team that recently went to Singapore do you think this will boost a bit of the younger boys who had a first field of international competition? Definitely, you know, Dion, that, um, the Turagu's concept, um, obviously sponsored by InterOil, has really benefited the, the PNG Puk Puk's in the sense that it's offered them a wider selection base and an opportunity to develop the fresh talent. Now, the boys were selected straight out of the NPC Sevens tournament, put straight into the Turagu's, and we can expect to see some of them feature in this national team. Now, through that, uh, Lawrence Kuso has made it into the into the Puk Puk's uh, contingent, as well as Robin Loma, Billy Toria, and of course, Emmanuel Geis, who have returned to the squad as well. Now, let's take a look at what uh, the interim coach, Douglas Geis, had to say about his selection to Auckland. I've been in the, I've been, um, just been appointed just an in interim coach at the moment, so I'm just doing my, how I see best would work for our sevens program, so I've sort of, uh, it's a, clean start for me so it was pretty good um, and it was really good of uh, Interroyal coming on board with the Turagus uh, building that pathway for the National Sevens team so I've, my selection was mainly based from the NPC and uh, finalizing through the Interroyal Turagus trip to Singapore. Now coach Douglas guys has done a great job with the men's team but what about the women's team? Now, the women's team coach, Sydney Wesley, has made a few drastic changes to the team. We've seen Kimi Rapilla not being named in um, this year's squad to the Oceania Sevens Championships, while PNG's gold medalist boxer from the 2015 yeah. Pacific Games, Debbie Cowra, makes her comeback to That's Sevens. Right. She did play Sevens before, then she went over to boxing and she's back again in Sevens. Yes, and we, can, uh, we also see Touch Rugby's Joylene Tickot join the team okay. as well. Um, now, Sydney Wesley is also looking to develop the image of the women's rugby mm -hmm. team and this is what he had to say uh, when we caught up earlier on last week. The core of the team is uh, uh, pretty much the team that's been around for the last two, three years. Uh, I'd say 90% of the team is, the, is made up of the, the, uh, uh, the girls that played in the recent uh, uh, Pacific Games. 
We have uh, we have uh, 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 contacts down in Brazil. We've been uh, monitoring them, and we also have uh, uh, a couple of rugby personnel that we're uh, traveling here in Fort and uh, monitoring uh, Amelia. Uh, Amelia is also, uh, I'd say, playing at Brisbane, uh, where the uh, the standard of rugby down there is a lot higher than here. And I think uh, with their experience, uh, bring it into the team. Uh, it'll really help the team. You mentioned earlier the team will depart tomorrow at 11 a.m. for Auckland. The competition kick starts on Saturday and will continue right throughout the weekend. And the, the, both the Palais and Pukpuks are expected back here in Papua New Guinea early next week. Now we've got a few messages for them, don't we? Yes, we do. We wish them all the best. The whole country's behind you. Make us proud. And also there is um, still a lot going on in the seventh circuit. Yes, now while Sevens is on the rise here in Papua New Guinea, this weekend Medang will host the Kalibaba Lighthouse Sevens Tournament funded by uh, MP there, Nixon Duvan. So it will be big. We'll see a lot of teams from Port Moresby and around the country going. So do stay tuned to MTV Sports Scene next Monday as we'll have all the results and highlights. Now we'll head out for a few short messages. Don't go anywhere. Shane Saroya joins us after this break with an update on surfing. Welcome back to Sports Scene. Now, last week we had some of the World Surfing Association representatives here in Port Moresby. Some big news there for surfing fans in Papua New Guinea. Yes, definitely. The World Surfing League is coming to um, Papua New Guinea. We'll be hosting an international event right here in Medang. Um, it's the first of its kind. And uh, Shane Soria gives us some more information about that. But now, Surfing Association of Papua New Guinea is on the verge of hosting one of the biggest events on the surfing calendar, in conjunction with the World Surfing League. Tupira in Medang province has been chosen among other potential surfing sports in PNG, such as Vanimo, Manus, Kaviang and Bougainville to stage the event. World Surfing League representative Steve Robertson was in the country to scout potential surfing sports to host international surfing tournament next year. Medang has been selected as the ideal location to stage the tournament because of surf consistency throughout the year, the security on the ground, and the logistics and other necessities that an international tournament would require. To do a serious car. Stays super deep, flying through that, right over the two monsters. We've matured to a point now where we're ready to to uh, invite the world into Papua New Guinea. We, we've developed our our policies, our model, our foundation, and, and we believe now we've we're well established and we are in a position to accommodate um, the 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 world the world touring circuit to come and experience our waves, our culture, our people, and of course, if I'm correct, Steve, under the the uh, broadcasting rights, it'll be beamed live by television to the rest of the world to see what we're doing on the ground. Um, there's not a lot of information out there about the surf in Papua New Guinea, but the small bits that I have heard, um, it sounds really beautiful and really exciting. And um, you know, from, from our perspective, we love to take our events to great waves and to great uh, locations and it sounds like Papua New Guinea could be that sort of location. It's, it's quite a remote location that we're going to. Um, but surfers are very much um, up for expeditions, love to travel, love to find great waves and love that spirit of adventures. Roberts also highlighted that the International Surfing Tournament will bring with it a lot of spin-off benefits to the local community and the country as a whole. When we go and run events like that, they do have 
a lot of positive spin-offs for the local area and for the country that hosts these events. And we only want to do it if it's, if it's something that will have um, a positive spin-off for everybody. Our athletes, us as an organisation, the local community and the country as a whole. SAPNG has over 144 registered members in the country and we'll be expecting to see more when the competition gets underway. In 2007, SAPNG successfully hosted a national championships in Vanimo, Sundown Province, and Tupira in Medang Province in 2011. That set a benchmark for what is currently in process of becoming a reality, the World Surfing Tournament. And with the code seen as new or not so popular, SAPNG president said the aim of the organization is to promote the popularity of the code, not only as the tourist sport but also to promote our local culture and traditions. Mr. Abel is hopeful to see the native wood surfboards that are crafted locally by local surfboard makers to be used by local surfers against traveling pro surfers. One, one uh, innovative play, um, uh, a novel uh, event that will take place and um, I'm planning to show Steve up in, in Tupira is we want to showcase our traditional carved out wooden boards called splinters and these boards are carved out of traditional balsa wood and um, through Justice Kiriwam's initiative um, a lot of the local artisans in, in, in Tupira North Coast Medang are now carving uh, traditional timber boards out of, out of trees and we want to for no points, no prize money, nothing, during the whole competition window, we want to uh, have a fun event where our local Papua New Guinean surfers will take on the world's best riding these traditional splinter boards. We want to give your visiting surfers a run for their money. According to Robertson, it may be possible to run a women's professional event in the region. This could attract professional surfers like the women's champion Stephanie Gilmore and many others who are huge athletes on the world stage. If the SAPNG is successful in hosting the tournament, it will draw the attention of the members of the World Surf League body and surfers around the world and could be a window of opportunity to see an influx of world-class surfers and tournaments to be staged here in PNG. Having spoken with Andy today and talking about the ideas and the types of events that um, might suit this area, um, you know, it, it's very possible that we might run a very high-level women's um, uh, professional event in this region. And um, the women's uh, world surfing tour at the moment has never been better. The other thing I will say is, and I said it earlier, surfers are travellers and, um, uh, and they love going to new places. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a good chance you'll get some big names simply because they love to they love to go to exotic, warm water, good wave locations. So I'm not going to promise Kelly Slater, but I'll promise some great surfers. Thanks, Shane, for that exciting stuff to look forward to. Surfing, cool. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, I can go to Medang to watch what's happening. School I surfing. know nothing about surfing. You probably drown. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all we have for you all tonight here on Sports Scene. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we enjoyed your company. Do stay tuned to the MTV Sports Facebook page, though, because we will have all the sporting updates posted online for the next week. That's right. Then um, that's. Just should be just about it. Yes, so do join us same time, same place next week. I can finally get off my stool. Dion, pleasure. Good night. Shriek. <laughs> Good night, Papua New Guinea.